X-ray crystallography is an experimental technique in determining an unknown protein's molecular structure in a crystal. In order to solve the Fourier transform to describe the protein from the reflection data, we first need to find all of the information about the diffracted wave. This includes the wavelength, the amplitude and the phase. The wavelength is known from the initial setup of the experiment and amplitude can be determined from the spot intensities. However, the phase, at which point the wavefront has reached in its cycle, cannot be measured. Only certain angles of incidence that will result in in-phase diffraction from those sets of planes. The Fourier transform breaks up the wave that represents an unknown protein structure and breaks it up into its constituents. From here, using Fourier summation, these constituent parts can be brought together to reveal the structure. To overcome this phase problem, a range of techniques have been developed to estimate the phase in order to carry out the Fourier transform. One solution to the phase problem is molecular replacement. This method uses a protein model. A protein that has over 20% of an identical amino acid sequence to the protein you're studying will usually have the same fold and can therefore be used as a model. For example, this can happen when the same enzyme is derived from two different sources, and so this close homology of the sequence of amino acids. Now you have a suitable model protein, you can use molecular refinement programs to match the orientation of it with the orientation of your crystal. First, a rotation function is used. This rotates the model so that it matches the rotation position of your protein. Secondly, a translation function is used. This moves the reorientated model through the unit cell to line up with the position of your protein. Your model now provides you with the phase information that was missing earlier. Using these refinement methods is like completing one jigsaw puzzle with parts from another similar, but different one. For example, if our protein is likened to a fish with a detail such as a fin, we can use the phases from another type of fish without a fin to reveal the detailed structures of our first fish. It's an electron density map. From this electron density map, you can make refinements, such as add in amino acid side chains. By making adjustments, you are creating a new model. You can now take phases from this model, and they'll be more accurate than the phases from the first. Solving the phase problem can also be done through multiple isomorphous replacement. The protein is soaked in a solution of heavy metal, such as mercury or osmium which bind to one or more positions in the protein atom in order to change the structure of the molecule of interest. The alteration of the molecule structure can be used to acquire knowledge on the structure of the molecule. The electrons in the heavy atom all scatter in phase with one another. Because of this, different atoms contribute to the scattered intensity. They do this in proportion to the square of the number of electrons they contain. This means a uranium atom with 15 times the amount of electrons in a carbon atom will contribute to the scattered intensity 225 times the contribution of a carbon atom. This means that the spot on the diffraction pattern is more intense. This becomes useful when you compare the resulting electron density maps of the two crystals. One crystal containing the native protein and the other containing the protein but of the heavy atoms incorporated. The difference between them will be largely due to the scattering contribution of the heavy atoms. The first step is to locate the heavy atoms in the crystal, and then you can work out their contribution to the structure factors, the amplitude and wavelength values. The next step is to deduce the protein phase angles. Multiple anomalous dispersion is a very similar method to multiple isomorphous replacement, but is often chosen over the latter because MAD uses heavy atoms that absorb x-rays at particular wavelengths. The ability to tune the wavelengths facilitates the process of locating the heavy atom in the protein. This, this however, requires the experiment to be performed at a synchrotron, where it is possible to change the wavelength. Selenothionine, the thionine amino acid plus selenium instead of sulfur, is incorporated into the protein when it is being expressed in E. coli. Selenothionine is also recommended because the identity and number of sites is known from its amino acid sequence, which improves the quality of the electron density map. 
Now we have solved the phase problem. All your problems will now be solved.